Hey everyone, welcome back to This Week in Niche Pursuits News. And like always, we have another good week of news. A lot of things happening in the digital marketing space, the Google, the SEO space. And we're gonna talk about that. Uh, and of course, I've got Jared with me. How you doing today? Good to be here, Spencer. I'm excited for this week in the news. And I feel like we finally have a week where we can kind of dig into some of the topics a little bit and uh, really explore them. But it's not like we have two or three. I mean, we're looking at our list. We've got five or six to hit again today. So that might be the new norm now. Yeah, I think so. There's always a lot of things going on. Uh, even though it doesn't feel like it's as big of news items, it kind of still is um, and could could be very big impacting sites, right? Uh, and Some of these are a little tongue in cheek. We're going to have a little fun too. I'm excited about some of these topics today. You know, they're kind of piggybacking on some of the other stuff that's been happening over the last couple of weeks. Yep. So if you've been listening to previous episodes, I think you're going to love this episode because we do kind of <laughs> piggyback, you know, harken back to previous episodes a little bit. Uh, it's kind of fun. So some really good uh, news topics uh, that we're going to cover here. And then, of course, we've got our side hustles that we'll dig into, a couple of things that we've been working on. Uh, one thing that, uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited about to, to chat more about um, that I'll share here uh, as part of my side hustle. Uh, and then finally, our weird niche sites. Uh, a couple of uh, weird niche sites. Um, you know, one site maybe is going to crash our Chrome okay. browser here <laughs> during the podcast. Hopefully, it doesn't. So it's kind of one of those that that's how know, weird it's, it is. That's how weird it is. It may or may not be working by the time uh, we get there. So stick around for that. Before we jump into the podcast, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. Do you remember this campaign? It was all over the news. It is the most intelligent royal campaign. With over 100 links generated in the world's biggest online publications, this is one of the most viral PR campaigns of 2021. This is how we've done it. The methodology was pretty simple. We looked at the QS World University rankings for the institutions attended by key members of the royal family to discover which royal is the brightest of all. Meghan Markle came out on top, followed by Kate Middleton and Prince William. We put these findings in a press release and sent it to mainstream media and journalists who write about royals. From Russia to the UK, the US, Vietnam and Japan, this story got massive coverage, landing over 100 links and created a massive buzz on social media. Simple research, but a great story that journalists love to write about. I hope this will put you on fire and will give you inspiration. If you want similar link building PR campaigns for your website, head to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them now. Um, so up first is... Uh, we just want to mention briefly uh, the Google uh, Core update, the November Core update has been going on now for about a week. We announced it, like it got announced, I think, just a few minutes before we hit record uh, last week. It is rolling out now. It's been about a week. And uh, so for me, I can just share what I've seen on my sites. Um, for niche pursuits, it's actually increased the traffic a little bit. I definitely am seeing maybe a 10% uh, bump in organic search. So it's a good uh, update for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good update for everybody. Uh, Jared, are you seeing anything or hearing anything out there? I mean, what I would call sub 10% one way or the other on most of the sites that I've looked at. Um, uh, in terms of my own portfolio and client sites, I will say that I've seen numerous, like three, four, five, six different independent people say that they're seeing some recovery from downturns experienced during the HCU that are clearly tied with when the core update started really hitting. Most people saw the core update start hitting Friday, Saturday-ish of last week. I don't know what that puts us, uh, the you know, third or fourth or something like that. Um, and so, you know, if you had a site that was negatively impacted by the HCU, you might be good to pop it. If you've kind of been ignoring it and like just kind of putting your head in the sand and hoping it all blows over, you might want to pop into analytics, get the, get the stomach up for it and see if maybe you did have a little bit of recovery. Um, we've seen, I don't know, I think you've seen some of the same Spencer, but at least three to four or five different people saying, Hey, I'm definitely seeing recovery to some degree. Yeah. If there's any chatter that I've been seeing that that I have seen, that's about it, right? Is that it? It seems to maybe be positive uh, for a lot of people, a lot of uh, uh, sort of niche site creators, bloggers. Um, definitely hasn't been you know big doom and gloom 
anything like that. So that is good. It's probably got another week to finish rolling out. They usually take about 14 days or so. Uh, so we'll keep our eyes on that. But to keep things interesting, and we did mention this last week, that Google would be rolling out with the new uh, Google Reviews update, and that has officially happened. The, the, the update has begun, uh, and that just started uh, yesterday, I believe. Is that right? Uh, it might have been today. I think it was this morning. It may have been. Uh, let's see. It started – here, I'm sharing my screen. It started November 8th okay, yesterday. Um, at yep. 12 yeah, p.m. Eastern Time. So just, uh, just yesterday it started. Uh, so maybe people would start seeing some sort of impact today. But, again, maybe it's going to take a couple of weeks to uh, finish rolling out. Yeah, so the thing about the review update – and remember this used to be called the product review update, and then they dropped the product, which is interesting because we were noticing – in previous review updates that they were impacting more than just review URLs, right? right. And so um, so it's, it's a bit of a conundrum, right? But it, it's interesting because now we have to analyze a review update at the same time as a core update. So it's gonna make a mess out of it. It, it I think now we're just at the point where we're just throwing up our hands and saying like, hey, you know, updates happening all at once and we're just gonna evaluate it as, as is. I mean, it, it seems like that's the norm now. Google's yeah. just doing a bunch of updates, and um, you know. So I guess if you have a ton of URLs that are reviews or product reviews that appear to be hit, it's probably the product review update. Uh, if it's other URLs, right, that are not are not product reviews, it's probably the core update. But it makes it so confusing, not not easy to follow. Uh, it's interesting because I was reading this article, and we, it's been a while since we had a re well, not that long, but in Google Land now. So I think July was the last <laughs> one. So I mean, that's like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Um, and I was reading uh, in this article on Search Engine Roundtable about some of the things the review update published by Google is meant to, to target. I don't know about you, but it, it looks strikingly similar to what we ended up with from the HCU. Hmm. Um, and I, I can kind of read some of the things that I, that I saw. Yeah. Google's advice for writing high-quality review content includes, and again, Spencer, tell me if this sounds a lot like what you and I have been noticing when we review HCU stuff here on the, on the podcast, evaluating from a user's perspective demonstrating expertise, providing evidence, sharing quantitative measurements, explaining what sets a product apart from competitors, discussing benefits and drawbacks based on original research, how our product has evolved, key decision-making factors, key design choices, including links to other resources and multiple sellers. Yeah. Very interesting, right? Evaluate from a user's perspective, right? That's All of these the things. The first too. thing. And what mm -hmm. do we see in the HCU? Yep, same thing, right? They they want you to sort of write as though uh, you're writing for humans, right? Uh, is is sort of the common phrase that they're always uh, making, making it more uh, user sort of friendly, user perspective. So, anyways, um, yeah, hard to say. I mean, we got the core update, we got the reviews update, and in theory, they both run two weeks. So, in theory, we'll be talking about this again next week, maybe wrapping up the core update, and maybe still midstream with a little bit of data to look at from this reviews update. But yeah, it'll be hard to know which is which. Yep, and so that's about all we have to say about that, right? It's it's happening. Other than uh, I guess that Google says this is the last time they will announce a reviews update or have it be its own standalone sort of um, update, they're just going to roll it out and you won't know. It's just going to be part of the, the core update, I guess. Because maybe it's now forward. part of the HCU. Or maybe it's part of the HCU. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to follow along. That's what's happening. Uh, got the two Google updates happening right now. Uh, so buckle up, kind of check your site, see what's happening here over the next week or two. Uh, hopefully it's uh, good things. Good luck to everybody out there. Spencer, I got to ask you on record here. Do you think we'll mm. get one in the usual kind of Black Friday, early December period? <laughs> it's it was so interesting because there was a tweet that Google put out that essentially said, um, "We don't try to normally do this around holidays," and you and I were both like, "Yeah, you do every year." Uh, and so, will that? Um... So, I can't remember. I wish I had it in front of me. I think Danny or somebody commented on that tweet and said that was many years ago. <laughs> that I, was many. I think that it was an old Matt Cutts comment that either Danny or somebody else actually said, like, ah, that's yeah, that was yes, that was yesteryear. We we cared about people last decade. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go with yes. There is going to be another. I am too. Big update before the end of the year. Okay. I don't know if it'll be Black Friday or what, but sometime in December when we're all getting ready to settle down for Christmas. Ah, uh, we're gonna get excited again with Google and what's the Ebenezer going on Scrooge of digital, oh, digital marketing is coming. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh, 
That feels like a uh, nice sketch uh, that needs to happen. Uh, somebody uh, make that. Um, so, all right, that's that's what we've got going on there. But uh, there was another sort of interesting. I don't know if this is news uh, per se. It's actually maybe the first time a news item that we're going to talk about is referencing an article that was written like six months ago. Uh, but it's news because of what we talked about last week. So last week was the Verge article, the big SEO expose article uh, about the alligator party and SEOs are ruining the internet. Uh, that article, right, that, that uh, was talked about widely across social media. And so uh, I don't know who uh, pointed this out, but somehow it came into my, um, you know, my atmosphere where I saw this, that The Verge had written an article a long time ago, and I'm going to share this tab, that is 100% written by ChatGPT. And they are not even trying to hide the fact that it was written by AI, uh, right? Like, you got to just go read this article. It's the best printer 2023. It's very SEO optimized, but it's all written by AI. Uh, and so best printer 2023, just by this brother laser printer everyone has, it's fine. Um, the brother whatever it is will print return labels for online shopping, never run out of toner, and generally be a printer instead of a physical instant uh, instantation of a business model. Um, you it it's hard to like explain without reading the entire article but here's one just in bold right to give you an idea uh chat gpt ideas about printers i didn't even proofread this don't read it unless you are a lonely google search robot in which case look at this incredible demonstration of experience expertise authority and trustworthiness and rank this post first in searches for quote best printers <laughs> okay that is literally like the entire article is like not written for humans, 100% written for the Google bot by AI, right? And it's just super funny because this whole Verge article last week was talking about the trash of the internet and all these terrible articles that are written for SEO purposes. And then the Verge has clearly been doing it at least, right, since March of 2023 when this was written spamming the internet with AI written content that is just there to rank in Google. Oh, and it is ranking well in Google. It feels like the joke's on us. <laughs> I mean, the, for, for starters, like this is, like you said, flagrantly, it's not just writing AI, it's touting in the art. It's almost like, um, I remember, you know, the whole Kyle Roof scenario where he ranked lorem ipsum content it's almost like hey google <laughs> look at how good i am look at how yep. dumb your results are i could actually do this and rub it in your face that's exactly what this feels like it's like basically calling out all the things that they complained last week mm -hmm. about seos but the reality is is that an seo had nothing to do with this article ranking number one right. none of our scammy tactics had anything to do with this article ranking number one. It was nothing but what Google rewards, which is a high powered domain and keyword optimized content. And it ranks really well. And it has nothing to do with all the stuff that they dragged through the mud last week. Yeah, exactly. And so just to drive this home, you know, I, on this other tab, I'm going to share now, um, I went ahead and searched for best printer 2023. And uh, side note, SGE is showing a massive pack of Whew. SGE stuff, oh right? Gosh. That's like illegal. one of the biggest I've ever seen. Uh, wow. I got to scroll a couple times. But then if you do scroll, and it's not at the top of page one, but it is right here, right? Bottom of page one or wherever you call this now. The Verge article is ranking and I'm sure getting traffic and making affiliate commissions. All, you know, written in a way that is not for humans at all. <laughs> so really calls into question this helpful content update, you know, write articles for humans. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I hate to say it, but it just drives home a lot of the points that people were making on that Twitter thread and that Verge article comments that, you know, that we shared about, hey, all these big sites with huge domain authority, they can get away with anything, get away with murder um, because they have a DR of 95. And I quote, just one. I have to read one line, Spencer. 
Okay. Here's a button to buy whatever Brother Laser Printer our commerce team is getting the best affiliate rates on right now. Oh, man. It's it's so good if it wasn't so sad. Uh, oh, if there wasn't ever a case in points about all the Forbes bickering we've done in the last you know nine months or you know two years. As it there's that one. I love it. <laughs> And uh, as you pointed out, this article was written by, or at least it's under the name of Nile Patel, who is the editor-in-chief of The Verge, who had a back and forth with Danny Sullivan related to the uh, article published last week on The Verge. So it's just, I don't know what you call it, but it's just a little extra, you know, something, a uh, little, little stab in the back there um, because it's all the same parties involved. Uh, I mean – it's like when you're asked to talk about something that already talks about itself. I mean, it's it's so cringy that it, you know, like, you know, when there's things that you have to talk about, but they're so cringy, you just want to kind of crawl in a hole. That's kind of how I feel right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, open invitation to both Nile Patel and Danny Sullivan, if you want to come on to the podcast uh, and chat about this, either together or separately. We'd love to have an open forum just to talk about why is this article ranking so well in Google when others that are written by bloggers that are definitely more in-depth, written by humans, people that have tested products, not ranking well in Google. So just an open question. Uh, you should read the comments as well. <laughs> Nile Patel is – uh, oh, there we go. Is, uh, is, is, is quite happy to approve plenty of AI comments. Is I that expect right? that my child will inherit this printer. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to, you know, dig deep into the comments or anything else, right, just just Google best printer 2023 and you'll find this article uh, and you can go read that. So oh, thanks. Thanks to whoever uh, reshared this uh, for me. It was yeah, perfect, perfect timing piggyback from last week's episode. Mm. Uh, so also kind of piggyback on last week's episode, this whole discussion of um, all the comments that were had on Twitter with uh, Danny Sullivan about um, the helpful content update, about this article, about um, sort of my post from a couple of weeks ago about, you know, is Google slowly killing blogging? Uh, well, I'm sharing on my screen here now Danny's response. He essentially says, somebody asked me uh, this week for any examples that I give to the bring back to the Google uh, search team. You know, do I take any of the feedback that I've gotten from SEOs and actually take it back to the Google search team and they implement that? Uh, and so he was nice enough to compile uh, sort of a report um, that he has recently shared uh, concerns and questions and suggestions that he's taken feedback from us, from SEOs in general, and taken that back to the Google team. And so there's a lot in here um, of actually things that that he has um, taken back to the team, and it's kind of interesting. It's very interesting. I mean, Spencer, you and I were having a good time. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a link to some of the things you shared because he has hyperlinks. We can't see the hyperlinks. Yeah, exactly. And I'm exactly. pretty sure some of the hyperlinks are to some of the things you've talked about. And I'm pretty sure one of the hyperlinks is to the spreadsheet I put together for the helpful content update and how to evaluate Whoa. your site. Oh. Um, I mean, I got at least five DMs from people circling and going like, that's definitely a link to your spreadsheet. But the point is, is and I'm just having fun poking around, but this is clearly related to, um, you know, some of the things that we talked about, uh, I guess, what, two weeks? No, last week. Mm -hmm. How the time flies. And I mean... Look, let's be honest. This was so cool to see. Like, you couldn't have been someone who's been involved in the junk of the last couple of weeks and see this and not kind of feel like, well, I, thank goodness. Like, this is what we sort of always have wanted from Danny. And maybe he's been doing this for a long time. Certainly, the results don't make it feel like that. But a little bit more transparency. And so it just it, it makes us feel like he's less the enemy. And yeah. at least there's a go between whether it's working or not, you know, at least there's a feels like there might be a conversation happening. I don't know. That's, that's certainly the, the way I feel like a lot of people felt too about it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's good to know that Danny really is taking the feedback, right? He's not just jumping into the weeds on Twitter and trying to defend Google, which, you know, he partially is. But the other part of it, it sounds like, okay, some people brought up good perspectives. I'm going to take this back to the search team. So, um, you know, my thought was like, wow, we actually might be impacting how Google works. Yes. 
which is a crazy thought. Um, you know, and I was kind of telling my wife this and she didn't really care, but I was like, man, isn't that cool? Like I might actually impact how some sites are ranked. She's like, yeah, that's nice, honey. Yeah, he you know, could have sent this to his mother. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't know who this went to. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure this did. Um, uh, I, I think it was, uh, I think it was a very good move on Danny's part. Again, we're yeah. seeing this sort of stuff happen. We're seeing him engage in your tweets from two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We're seeing this transparency and feedback loop. Maybe the feedback was always happening, and now we're just seeing the transparency. But I think Danny has made some great moves in the last couple of weeks in what has been a pretty ugly time for Google in terms of rankings, results, all that. Yeah. And just, you know, one quote that is, you know, exactly what we were just talking about uh, here on my screen is over and over people noted large publishers like The Verge that seem like they can write about anything and get rewarded. A compilation of such complaints is here, which he links to, which uh, may be a link to Sean Kay's large comment that he had on my thread. And one key tweet in part is this, and maybe, maybe, maybe no, not. I, yeah, I, we don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the suit's <laughs> tweet right there. We don't know. We don't know. Um, and then related is the idea that Parasite SEO uh, – Parasite SEO site win, sites that lease themselves out to third parties and then content ranks on these sites that would never succeed on a different site, right? It's just interesting, right? They're paying attention to all this discussion, all this chatter. They know what's going on, and if they see something working that shouldn't be working, like Parasite SEO, or maybe something that's broken there. that needs to be fixed, right, uh, they're going to take it back to the team and fix it. I thought this was very interesting that Danny was considering, hey, we should develop a helpful content tool. This is the and, one that people are thinking might be linking to my to my little tool. Yeah, one of these. Um, this is a very rough idea. I got, yeah. I got that circled a bunch. Yeah. Yep. Uh, very much could be based on, you know, Jared's spreadsheet. Uh, and to so, be fair, probably not, but... My you know my spreadsheet like to... uh, didn't get the virality that your your tweet did so yeah yeah but you made anyways you made some money off yours I didn't make I any did. money off my tweet you're right so but you're changing needed... Google Spencer <laughs> I hope so hopefully for the better don't can come you, after me if you your really, website's not ranking anymore can you really put a price tag on that <laughs> no no you can't that'll go right on my resume right at the top I changed how Google works. Um, yeah, that, this is, seriously, that should be your, your tweet byline. Changing Google, one tweet at a time. Oh, I love it. Ooh, ooh. All right. Last week, I think I was fair at first content. This week, I'm writing your byline for you. I like it. Man, I got to re-listen to these recordings because I'll forget that after this. Um, so, all right. I think, I think we uh, you know, hit that one enough. Uh, Again, Danny, it's a safe spot. Come on here. We'll talk shop. Yep. We really Clearly, will be nice, Danny. Clearly, you recognize some of the issues we are at least sharing, and that's that's the first part of a long, long journey. Yep, absolutely. We're just trying to get it right. Um, you know, there's a lot of hard p people out here working very hard. You know, bloggers that are we think doing a good job and uh, want to make sure their their website is is viewable in the SERPs. So, okay, another just uh, interesting tweet. And this is based on um, news. The New York Times posted their quarter three revenue numbers uh, just this this week, uh, a couple of days ago, I believe. And Glenn Alsop did a great write up as it relates to the wire cutter, and because that's a you know wire cutter is owned by the New York Times, and so I will just share his tweet because he had a great breakdown uh, of that. Um, basically, okay, uh, quarter three revenue numbers, $598 million, uh, which is a 9.3% increase over last year. Uh, now, Glenn estimates that the wire cutter affiliate commissions are bringing in at least $6 million per month, per month, and potentially a lot more, right? Uh, and he kind of goes through his entire analysis, how he came to that, but a lot of it is based on on numbers um, and basically here that uh, the New York Times stated that digital other revenues, which consists primarily of wire cutter affiliate revenue, totaled $37.2 million for the quarter, right? So that's three months. Anyways, and then he did some math to, to you know, kind of come up with this number of, okay, 
he thinks that you know at least eighteen point six million um, is coming for for the quarter uh, was coming from the wire cutter, right? And so he can estimate that at least six million, but probably and, even more. I was gonna say I was gonna piggyback on that. To be clear, Glenn almost trips over himself multiple times to basically echo like that he thinks it's very conservative, right? Like Neiman Lab yeah. believes it's much higher. He's being very generous with what he's marking down here. So arguably much higher, you know, than that. Yeah. And um, it's just it's just fascinating because I, I have this number in my head. I This probably isn't right, but I seem to recall several years ago that everyone was ooing and aahing over the wire cutter because they were doing forty to $50,000 a month. Um, and then well, they got sold to the New York Times at couple he, years later maybe yeah he says back in 2018 we know which was you know five years ago we mm -hmm. know wire cutter was generating a, around 1.6 million per month okay and um so this is what a five four x increase on that in five years and i don't know what year they got sold but they got they got bought by new york times for 30 million dollars which on six million a month, this many years later, looks like a bargain, because six million profit per month is seventy-two million profit per year, and they bought it for thirty million five wow. years ago. Wow. Uh, now, obviously, they've spent a lot of money on it since then, but looking like a absolute brilliant investment. And we were saying back at the time to piggyback up what you're saying, like, man, New York Times really overpaid for this sucker. Mm hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And. Uh... They're doing quite well, and uh, a lot of large publications are doubling down on this type of thing, right? They're taking advantage of the opportunity to get affiliate commissions, do product reviews. The New York Times has done it very well, of course, because they brought the wire cutter team in house. Much on, sorry, mm -hmm. I just, not everyone spends as much on their product reviews as the New York Times. Like The no. Verge do, probably doesn't spend quite as much on their printer reviews as wire cutter would. You know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. I couldn't help it. Um, but so it, it's just fascinating. And again, I don't, I don't know if this is positive news or negative news, right? For people listening, it's like, oh, that's great. The New York Times and the wire cutter are making so much money. They're growing. But here we are, the little guys, we're making less and less with Amazon affiliate commissions. So there's two sides to that coin. There's tons of money still being made in affiliate commissions. But it kind of does feel like a larger piece of the pie is going to the big players out there. This feels more like a bit more like your friend winning, uh, maybe winning the lottery rather than someone you don't know winning the lottery. Um, I feel like the wire cutter winning, at least while we can't compete with the wire cutter because their domain rating is the New York Times, mm -hmm. at the very least, with the wire cutter winning at its current standards of publishing content, at the very least, we know that good content wins when the wire cutter wins. And right now, that's a much better play for us. Uh, in this game than when we see The Verge and their junk win. Because how can we compete against high DR, no, absolutely no no, um, no emphasis on high quality product reviews, right? At least most people will agree that, that Wirecutter did a pretty darn good job on that. And so at least we see quality winning here. Agree, we can't compete with it. But, you know, there's some semblance of truth in that at least. Right. Yep. That's a good take. I agree. Um, you know, it's somebody that, yeah, we can feel a little bit better about, you know, ranking, doing well there. And, and if you want a great example, I was just looking at this earlier today, go look at the wire cutter and the types of reviews that they do. They are stellar and the way they're monetized, they've got their review boxes. Like here's our number one pick. It's right at the top. And then they got their, you know, three, like here, this one's also good. And this one's great too, but this is our top pick. It's all right at the top. So it's monetized really well. And then super in depth with images. And so look at the wire cutter as a great example of how to do a good article versus the verge, which is not so much how to do a great article. Um, so. We have, I think, just one more news item that's come out recently, and one we don't know how it will impact all of us, but it's very interesting because it comes from Elon Musk and the team at X. Uh, and so just announced, uh, when was this? Um, November 4th, it looks like. So just a few days ago, Elon Musk and the XAI team revealed their chat GPT competitor, Grok. So... Grok is out. I you can't 
Uh, it's not open to the public to use, but you can sign up on the waiting list to potentially test it out. Uh, I tried that out. I signed up, and so I'm on the early notification list. You have to be a, um, what do they call it, a premium subscriber of Twitter. Have the blue check mark to get on that waiting list, in case you're wondering. So we don't know it exactly where it will go, but always interesting with somebody with very deep pockets gets into the AI game. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's interesting on a number of fronts. Like, we can't hide from the fact that Elon Musk had a lot to do with OpenAI in its early days, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, good point. He, he owned a part of, he had a stake in the company. Um, there were a lot of articles coming out, I think, like March or, or April about his involvement. He was a big talent recruiter for it, and he had a lot to do with it. There were independent sources saying that. So, I. <laughs> Very interesting now he's developed and built his own model. Um, and I think uh, I did a little research. I, I was trying to figure out, like, okay, what's the difference between uh, this and ChatGPT? And from what I understand is Grok is meant to be an AI chatbot that relies on the data available on X. And so it's trained using data from basically only social media along with data scraped from the web. So it combines these. Mm. So I – that's a fascinating idea, and I'm starting to think about how all these things we, we could potentially use this for if it turns out to be really good and really cool, but I'll kind of just pause there at, at, at that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, for the angle that you mentioned, right, Elon Musk was so involved, had a like 10% stake in OpenAI. Maybe that's not right. I de definitely had a stake, maybe still does, um, but he was very outspoken when OpenAI went from a – essentially non-profit organization to a for-profit uh, organization, made this massive shift. Um, and Elon Musk was very outspoken about that. Of course, now he's got his own AI. We don't know all the reasons. Um, but is all the data coming from Twitter that their models are going to be trained on better than what other models are going to get? I don't know. It's um, kind of interesting. Grok is designed to have a little humor in his response. Musk promises witty, sarcastic responses from Grok, which he hopes will serve as an antidote to ChatGPT's sometimes dry responses. There you go. So if you're going to try and write some, some comedy bits, maybe this is going to be the one. Uh, and I guess that makes sense, right? Twitter is usually a little more humorous, right? Or sometimes lighthearted or sometimes definitely not. Uh, but there's certainly data probably on Twitter that is more sort of witty, weird comments. Again, um, I mean, going back to what we talked about, the Verge article and so many other things we've seen, like it's an interesting thing to think about. Like if it's almost this weird uh, paradox that Google seems to want more personable, witty, fun, conversational type of, uh, of content that relies on social media type of stuff. Like we're seeing Reddit rank. We're seeing these kind of articles rank that are more user generated. And I'm just curious to see if this would be better for content because it could incorporate social media along with scraped data from the web rather than just straight scraped data from the web, which ChatGPT is. Yeah, so we'll keep you posted as soon as it's available to use or we see other people using it, what it's like. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of let you know. But that is definitely something to have on your radar uh, of a new AI tool um, from Elon Musk and the team at X. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Just wanted to take a short break and remind you that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. I've got a short clip from Ferry at Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. What a crazy campaign. How to sleep on your back. This campaign got us links in Huffington Post, Glamour Magazine, Mirror, and lots of other great news publications. Let me show you how we've done it. It was so simple. Our sleep client provided us with expert commentary about how to train yourself to fall asleep on your back. They also gave advice on why it's best to sleep on your back. Once we've had this information, we went to Muckrack and searched for journalists that consistently write about sleep and well-being. We've sent these journalists the advice provided by the client and within one day, the links started flowing in. Glamour Magazine, a DR81 website, picked it up. Huffington Post, DR88, Mirror UK, DR90, a massive avalanche of links blasted through our client's website with this simple yet effective campaign about how to sleep on your back. I hope this inspires and I hope you'll use 
this technique to land massive links to your or your client's website. Are you looking for similar link building PR campaigns for your website? If so, just go to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Okay, boy, uh, we got through the news and uh, we've got a little bit of time left here so we can chat about our side hustles and then move into our weird niche sites. Um, I don't have a lot to share about my side hustles. And so one thing that I wanted to kind of just mention that I'm really excited about is I'm working on my tool called Rank Logic. It's a WordPress plugin that helps you get ranking data to get analytics to help understand if you're making content updates properly, um, a, a lot of those things. But a big thing that I've been working on for a long time, the last uh, three months or so, is a Google Analytics integration. And I may have shared that here on the podcast before, but it is finally ready for release uh, early next week. Um, I should be getting that out to existing uh, subscribers. People that have already purchased um, Rank Logic will be getting that update. And so that they can get all their Google Analytics data directly within um, within their WordPress dashboard as part of Rank Logic. And uh, what's cool about that is that, yes, you can get the number of page views and sessions listed out per page really easy, uh, but also you can then slice and dice that data. You can do it based on author or based on category of your website uh, or a combination of things, right? You can do authors written before this date only in this category and I only want to see social media traffic, right? And so you can do all these things that you either can't do uh, or is really complicated to do within GA4. Uh, and so that's going live, you know, uh, sometime next week to existing subscribers or of course anytime you buy it, that is now going to be part of rank logic. And so although not maybe a a side hustle in the traditional sense, it's something that's I've been working on on the side in the background for three, four months. Just excited to finally get it out the door. Man, I tell you, it's been said by many, many people, but I had to go to GA4 yesterday to get some data, some more advanced data for a client. And I I had a couple parameters I had to filter on. I had to filter down because they're a multi-language site, so I had to pull mm. out the foreign results. And then I also wanted to look at data from before the, core, the November core update compared to current core update, yeah. see if they were taking a bit of a hit. I was getting asked by the client about it. I'll tell you, I, I never really got a good answer because I couldn't multi-pivot. And when I finally figured out how to multi-pivot, I hit export. And guess what? The exported CSV had none of the pivoting in it. Oh, man. So Ouch. I just need a tool that figures out how to do all this so I don't have to go into GA4. I think that's the solution. I don't want to go into GA4. I just want yeah. to stay out of it. I just want to stay far away from it and let somebody else figure out how to make what I want happen inside of it. Well, that's what Rank Logic is going to do for you. Good. So um, starting next week, right, uh, Google Analytics integration, all the data is there, but it's just going to get even better and better over time because there are a lot of different, maybe there's uh, custom reports that you want to have you know, on the fly that are just there or built for you. And So we're going to continue building and get feedback from users, but really excited to share what, what I've been working on uh, for a long time starting next week. Congratulations. That's big news. Thank you. Yeah, so that's uh, that's really my side hustle uh, that I wanted to talk about. Um, happy to jump into whatever you got going on. Yeah, kind of a smattering of, of things here. So I've been teasing for a while that I was going to get back on recording videos for the Amazon Influencer Program, mm. and I did. Nice. Man, it was like Congrats. dusting off. It was like dusting off the bike. You know, I had to like dust it off, you know, pump the tires back up. I had to you know, put some grease in the chain. Like I really did. I had to get out my, all my recording stuff. You know, I mean, it's not that much, but, uh, you know, like find my tripod for a couple of these, but I'm um, mm -hmm. just like riding a bike. As soon as I got going again, I'm like, Oh, there we are. My old friend. It's been a little while, but you know, Getting you get in back rhythm. in that groove. So, um, I did 15 videos. Nice. Uh, not many compared to what I was doing in the heyday there, but you know, I had to get back, get back going again. All of them seasonal, so that was the thing. Um, it was a little weird to be donning uh, Christmas decorations on a warm, uh, sunny uh, afternoon here when it was far from Christmas time. Yeah. But um, focused on the seasonal things, and we'll see. I'm, I'm very interested to see as we go through Q4 if doing some seasonal 
videos and releasing them at right before people would probably presumptuously be buying those, if that'll be some of the best sellers in Q4, um, or if it's more about the kind of high ticket, high class products that always sell well, right? Like, um, interested to see how that goes out. So those are uploaded and I'm going to continue to crank out more content. And again, I'm trying to get to a thousand before the end of the year. Somebody reminded me, Spencer, that do we have a bet about his first to a thousand or not? I can't remember. I'm not even sure I want to know. Cause you're always, you've been beating me lately. Well, it sounds vaguely familiar. I think we, I think we tossed around the idea, but we never yeah. did anything official. Let's it's more just here. lighthearted banter about Light, yeah. um, trying to get there first. But well, here we are. I'm at nine. I'm happy to accept some money if if I get there first. If you win. Yeah, yeah. I'm at nine hundred fourteen. I think I can make that. Whoa, so, nine hundred fourteen. Yeah, aren't you beating me? Well, I was at one point. I don't even know I, what I'm at now. I've only done fifteen since I think my last update. So uh, now I feel embarrassed. Oh. I'm at seven hundred and seventy-eight. What? Have you like I, deleted videos? <laughs> Maybe Amazon deleted my terrible videos. Uh, I swear you were above eight hundred. Not anymore. Uh, um, okay. I I know I have a big backlog of videos. Oh man, you gotta get those up. It's Q four. I know, I know, I know. Got to got to get them going. And so, uh, but I don't know that I have a hundred and thirty. Don't you have people for this, Spencer? I'm supposed to. Maybe it's time to get new people. Ah, uh, 130. Okay, so I've got 130. You're going to beat me. So the bet's off. The bet's off. The bet's now off. The bet is officially off. It, it never happened. You're tucking tail. <laughs> it didn't happen. I never heard about any bet. Ah, uh, well, uh, well, we'll leave the bet aside. Um, Hey, another fun thing. It, as I look back on it, it's almost ironic that, you know, at the time one year ago, we weren't doing this weekly news podcast. We weren't talking about side hustles. But one year ago, next week, I launched kind of my first ever side hustle thing, and that was the um, fo- the website photography made easy course. Uh, uh, yes. And that was when the Weekend Growth brand launched. I needed somewhere to launch that, and it didn't make sense to put that under the banner of 201 Creative, my agency. My agency clients could care less about that. They don't want to learn how to do it. They want to hire us to do it, <laughs> yep. along with a lot of other things. So it didn't make sense to put it there. So we started this Weekend Growth website, threw up a quick design and quick website, um, and launched the course. And now we're a week away from one year on the course. So um, a kind of a fun little milestone. It, it, the course isn't really as special as kind of the larger brand that's now started to encompass an email newsletter, um, a YouTube channel, um, a whole bunch of other things. But um, next week, we will have a kind of celebratory birthday special for the photo course we'll launch. And we'll kind of celebrate one year in on not only the photo course, but but weekend growth. And um, I might try to put together some kind of weekend growth, like, Hey, one year in, rev- one year in, in, in review, if we can for next week, uh, next week at stuff. So, um, it also really represents, uh, I realized the first opportunity ever for me to kind of do some like black Friday stuff here. So that's right. Uh, you are partly to blame for that. You're like, Hey, what are you doing for black Friday? I'm like, uh, uh I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. all right, I got to sit down and think about that. So, so more to come with that next week, but you know, High level, because we talk about side hustles, and you, it's, you can't really necessarily think three or four steps down the road when you're starting these things, but a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about has coalesced, and it's not the opportunity you're pursuing in the moment, like the email newsletter, but it's what that leads to, which is what that leads to, which is what that leads to. And so, yep. you know, who knows, but here we are, and most of the things I'm talking about on the side hustle side of things with, no, with November are really piggybacking off of something I started a year ago without that in mind. So yeah, it really grows on itself. Congrats on uh, making it a year. The, the weekend growth brand has uh, continued to grow and it does well. You've shared your email and YouTube subscriber numbers, right? We've kind of followed along with that uh, over the majority of this year. Um, and so first of all, congrats on that. Uh, it, I think it might be interesting talking about Black Friday that uh, our episode when we do it always comes out on Friday. Oh. And so we will have an episode going live on Black Friday. Uh, so we may need to consider that as we record. Maybe we'll have a larger sort of section where that fits exactly, right? We, That's a good call. We can talk about, yeah, what's happening on Black Friday. And, we should. Um, yeah, so that could be fun. So I mean, Black Friday is a great, like, obviously we get our inboxes hammered. 
yeah. with stuff. But at the same time, I mean, it's a great way as someone in this space to think ahead of the curve a bit and kind of like plan, like especially if it's something that you already plan on spending money on or if you want to carve out some money for um, like learning or growth or new opportunities, like this is the best time of year to take advantage of those kind of things, you know? Yeah, exactly. If you've got a tool that you've wanted to buy and they've got a, got a deal, like, of course, go for it. Do it. That's going to be, uh, be the time of year to do it. So we'll, we'll chat about some of those things. I think that would be a good idea. Well, uh, that'll be in a couple of weeks. So I got a race to a thousand, although I have no bet in the table to win. And I got to get no. some Black Friday stuff put together, not only for Black Friday, but to talk about it here on the mm-hmm. Black Friday episode. So I got a little homework right. here. You got two weeks to pull it all together. All right. Uh, so clock's ticking. Very good. Uh, should we jump into our weird niche sites? It's official. My weird niche site has officially crashed this podcast already once. I think so. Yeah. We, uh, in case you guys missed our, hopefully the editing's perfect and they never noticed, so we shouldn't even mention it. But uh, yeah, this this recording may have crashed, and uh, we think maybe it was this weird niche site. That we've never. It. I can't think of a time we've ever crashed before. So no, we haven't. So I mean, that has to be it. I it's it. I don't have it pulled up yet. So hopefully we can finish this recording when I do pull it up. Oh, uh, and boy. show it. So we'll start with mine Good so we call. can get through mine. And then, you know, if we don't get to yours, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll list it They'll in the show why. notes. <laughs> They'll know why. If it, if it just ends right abruptly after your weird niche, we'll, we'll all know why. That's right. Hey, just read, read the notes in the YouTube description if you want to know what his site was. Okay, so uh, this is one. Um, yeah, it's – I don't know what to say about it other than it was shared – uh, with me, so this thank you again. Uh, somebody shared this with me, and it is uh, MissRachelNetworth.com. Oh, I know Mid- this one. This was Miss shared Rachel. by both of us, and you yeah. commented on it first. Mm-hmm. Mm. I said mine. I claimed it. <laughs> you did. So you got up I, earlier that morning than I did. I think <laughs> it's actually funny. I checked the notes today. I was like, "Ooh, did he write that one down?" And you hadn't, so I put it in the notes today. So I respect it. You uh, called it. I didn't like it, but I respect so, it. So, so thank you uh, for that. Um, I had no idea what this site was or who Miss Rachel was. But doing some some research, Miss Rachel is a YouTube star. She formerly was like a kindergarten teacher, elementary school teacher, something like that. And uh, she was making videos for her students or something. And they started to take off and she really leaned into YouTube and now is just crushing it. Uh, and so it's a, it's a net worth keyword that she's, this whole website is dedicated to Miss Rachel's net worth. At least that's how it started. Okay. Um, and, uh, actually now I'm looking at this, like, I don't even see any ads. No, I don't either, but I see all the latest site. posts. Yeah. Uh, that we'll get to, right. Um, I just thought it was really interesting. Oh, where's this? Here it is of, you know, her net worth over the years, right. Um, why I'm chuckling is because there is like zero references to where any of this information came from. It's like, they just say, yeah, she in 2018, she was worth 4 million. And then it went to 5.5 and now it's 10 million, right? Well, There's, I don't see any references of also, where they're getting this. I'm like, oh, this is really valuable. Like we had a nice table and it's telling me that in 2022, her net worth increased by 25%. Yeah, Pretty simple yeah. math, right? From 8 million to 10 million, pretty simple. Perfect. Somehow we didn't have that capability to calculate that prior to 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Not applicable. There was no increase. <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm tired of doing the math after three rows. I'm done. <laughs> it's like, just, just forget about it. It doesn't matter. You know, before 2020, it didn't happen. Uh, that's fine. I hadn't even noticed that. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, whether or not this is accurate is questionable uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, no display ads. Um, but yeah, I wanted to quickly pop over to Ahrefs uh, just to show that, I mean, the traffic is just, you know, appears to be doing really well. I didn't look to see if this was a redirect. I mean, this kind of looks be. like, you know, it came out of nowhere. It's but currently be. it's at about 30,000 uh, organic uh, traffic what? a month. What? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah, that's what it says. A DR of 63. Three months of being live. So it, it's got to be like a 301 yeah. uh, from, from an older domain. But when you look at the top pages, you start to see that, okay, it's not all about Miss Rachel. Although the top 
uh, performing keywords all are, you start to get other keywords like Iran occur so net worth. Um, there was a few others in here. How to decorate candle jars, plant housewarming gift, money saving tips for students, right? All of a sudden you start to get these other keywords. Uh, and as you look at the website itself, which if I come back over here, and I think it's, yeah, here in the, the latest post, right? You start getting things that I mean, they're just writing about all kinds of things. Uh, life in red with red Moroccan rugs, oh online gaming and social interactions by Instagram followers, uh, vacation rental security. So I don't know exactly what's going on with this website other than it feels like somebody bought an expired domain, Miss Rachel Net Worth. Well, well, why would they do that? This feels like, you know, maybe this is an expired domain. And uh, now they're just trying to take this high DR and publish anything and everything type of article on it. All right. I'm checking right now. Yeah, please do. Um, no redirects. No redirects. Okay. Well, maybe. maybe yeah, got to be expired. Let's go to archive.org here. Yeah, maybe this website, the domain, has existed for a long time. Nope. Nothing in archive.org. Okay, let's look at the backlinks. All I right, you're... You're going to witness all of this live, right? <laughs> we're either like, about to look like big idiots or we're going to find the, uh, <laughs> the like needle why, in the here. Why? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it got – so let's sort by DR, right? Um, it's got, I mean, a very paltry 133 – uh, domains linking to it. That's not going to yeah. get you a DR63 unless every single one of them is like the New York Times. Yeah, but it's got a lot of really high DR links, and they are all from this year. You're right. Wow, At least in the date column. Match. Oh, my gosh. They're all exact. A lot they of them are, are exact match anchor text. And interesting. Can I sort by UR? Uh, no, but... It makes me... When Mrs. Rachel Networth, your post receive a substantial number of likes. I mean, you want to talk about inserting... That's the, um, that's the, uh, the one from uh, uterfeed.com there near the top. Oh, of the I... I uh, of course, yeah, I changed that as soon as... It, it, you can see it anywhere. Like, look at any of those anchor texts that involved exact match. They're just injected in. Yeah, yeah. So is this... Um... Somehow they're they're spamming or yeah. found a hack on other websites. It almost feels like this looks like in. I mean, I don't want to call someone black hat, but this looks like injected. Looks, mm -hmm. it looks injected. It looks injected. It does, and um, <laughs> this looks like a bunch of sites that don't keep their WordPress uh, plugins updated. Miss Rachel Networth, Mitch Rachel Networth, Miss <laughs> yeah. Rachel Networth, all the same. There's Interesting. A few Instagram ones when you get down there. This looks injected. This looks hacked. It it does. It, right? They they found a, a vulnerability that All they right. were able to hack. Hey, we figured it out. There's nothing like a little pressure I, to make a dive. I in think here. we figured it out. Yeah. yeah so did. if somebody wants to do a deep dive and and write up a, a whole blog post about it, you know, be my guest. That'd be great. Whew. So I lost my, it looks uh, like my we, agency owner card there. <laughs> that's right. Um, but we caught this one. It feels like early on, right? Because yeah. the traffic yeah. just started taking off. Yeah. And so they're probably going to try and get a bunch more traffic, and then they're going to monetize this. So check back in a month or two should and uh, maybe this. do an update. There you go. So it's a weird niche site, not for the reason maybe we thought originally. It tells you how much research we do before the show. We basically <laughs> find something weird, and uh, we run with it. But uh, there you have it. Uh, I think an interesting discussion. That's um, a – I mean, interesting premise, obviously. Yeah. Um, to take a net worth topic that perhaps the person hasn't – monetize themselves miss rachel and build a website on it i mean it's an interesting topic especially if you could legitimately then start ranking for secondary or tertiary net worth topics like it brings up an interesting discussion like does google think that this is topically relevant for miss rachel or for the concept of net worth right mm. because if it if it looks more at this site as a net worth website rather than as a miss rachel then what's to stop you from writing about all the other net worth uh, exactly topics you can find you know
Yeah, if I were to jump into this, I would do something related to YouTube stars, right? She's a YouTube star, so I would just hit on every big YouTube yep, start star. With every right? educational one and then move into, you know, if you really wanted to be specific about it, then move outside of that into, you know, somewhat related semantically and then keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe opportunity. I don't know. But um, very interesting uh, website that is living out here on the internet. I would, I would call it weird. I yeah, would definitely I'd call it, it weird. I, 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 I do yeah. think like maybe, um, uh, maybe a bunch of people listening will have never seen an example of a site that looks about as clearly as possible to be using some, uh, some what we would call black hat techniques. So it might be eye opening for, you know, maybe somebody who's a little newer and hasn't seen that kind of in the wild. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just while you're talking, I am pulling up your oh, weird niche site, so I'm going to hope we get to it. This is the uh, first <laughs> weird niche site that I am not going to pull off my computer, so I'm going to be looking at the screen that you are showing to walk okay. through the niche site that I brought to the table because I'm so nervous it'll crash my computer. It, it seems to have pulled up okay, <laughs> um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, so you ready to go? Okay. Yeah, normally I'm the one doing this. So my weird niche is... Uh, also given by a reader. Thank you very much. By the way, I'm out after this week. So folks, let's uh, keep them coming. Um, yeah. The measure of things.com. Very bizarre okay. topic at first. Um, but I would encourage you just do what they say. Try what they're asking in front of you and you can kind of see it play out. So try typing 829.78 centimeters. And so if you're not watching, there's this search tab that you type a measurement. Um, and it All gives right. you calls uh, to try out because probably nobody knows what they have to do when they get here. And so just hit enter if you want. Or yeah, there you go. So I selected one. How big is eight hundred twenty-nine? So it now starts telling you things that this is related to. So for, for whatever bizarre reason you wanted what eight hundred twenty-nine point seven eight square centimeters was, it's going to go ahead and give you analogies that you might understand. Um, it's four fifths <laughs> as big as an airplane tray table. Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. It's Next about one's... two times as big as an Apple iPad. That's a little more helpful. Yeah. I can um, understand that. I might understand how big 828 cent square centimeters is, but I do understand that it's one-fifth as big as a bath towel. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's about 15 times as big or 15 total Post-it notes. Okay. There you go. Now, when we're talking the world of helpful sites, how could it get more helpful than this? And they go, I mean, they've got a lot here. Postage stamp, U.S. nickel, U.S. penny, nail head, tennis court. Uh, Obviously, my mind starts going with where are they getting this information. It's not like you can go to Wikipedia and see that something is four-fifths as big. And guess what, Spencer? They tell you right there, the source, and they have a hyperlink. Oh, is that right? Okay. Uh, just to, which hyperlinks am I clicking on? Yeah, you were, you were hovering right over it there. You just missed source. Let's go so go back, back down there. Permalink? And then... Keep going, permalink. Yeah. No, no, go back. Okay. Oh, you're fine there, too. Keep going Source. two more over. Source. There we go. Oh, and then it uh, links to another blog. It does. That tells and, you, of course, this page can, is not found. It, yeah, uh, of course. But you've got a citations <laughs> and stuff. So I didn't play around with it, to be fair with you. But I was very curious with how they're coming up with this data. I'd be curious to see what you think. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I mean, they've got this source link. Yeah, I, and all the all the links I've gone to so far, like the How page or product does not exist. Metadata, um, maybe? I don't know. I, yeah. I thought I had one earlier. So it feels like, I mean, maybe they originally got the information from whatever source this is. And it's been screwed. Right? Uh, a but then they one, right? Yep, this one's a Wikipedia one, right? So I'll share that tab. It tells you how big a playing card is. But I think they must have all this information in a huge database, right? Where mm -hmm. they've got a thousand items, you know, and they've got the measurement of each one. And then, yeah, and then it's just math after that. It's a formula. You know, when you punch something in, it says, okay, well, that let's pop out the ones that are closest to it. Yep, so you get um, 100 or 200 things like a car. How big is a car? And you get 100. You get playing yeah. cards and Post-its and quarters, and you get 100 of these, and then you just start running queries against that. So let's put um, 2.5 acres. Um, but uh, it, it appears – I'm going to go ahead and shut down the website uh, because uh, it does appear to have crashed. In case you're wondering – um, I'm now talking to myself, and Jared, 
I couldn't hear him anymore, so he had to go off. I think he's going to come back on here in just a second. <laughs> so I went ahead and I just talked the whole time um, about what was happening, okay. and clearly that the website crashed yeah. uh, the podcast once again. And so you, I just shut it down. You typed um, 2.5 and I disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I was going to see what 2.5 acres pulled up, but we're not going to see what that is. People can do that on their own. Um, At your own risk. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why the maybe that website is the website that had the vulnerability that got hacked for Miss Rachel. I don't know, oh. but something's going on uh, with that website that is not you working know, so well. You do well. enough of these live in terms of like we're just so many things we're doing in the moment. Like this is bound to happen. So oh man, uh, so <laughs> go go to that website at your own risk. But um, did you have any share, interesting data in terms of traffic or anything? Okay. I was going to say, I did have some interesting data. Don't pull it up, though, for goodness sake. Yeah. Pull up HREFs, I suppose, if you wanted. We know that's a pretty safe one. But, um, you know, some of the data behind it I thought was very interesting. It is a DR52, which if you did happen to catch a glimpse of it online before it crashed the podcast, you'd kind of wonder where it would get any links. But it does have quite a few backlinks. Um, it ranks for 17,000 keywords. It ranks for... Uh, gets to, uh, an estimated 24,000 organic uh, or traffic uh, uh, from organic search every single month. And uh, so a lot of those and I've got links, that pulled up now. Okay, there we go. Good. Go to keywords if you can. And um, you'll see a lot of those links, with, like the link we were just looking at is actually, um, it's, it's very weird. Uh, you know, we can discuss this because the, what's ranking are hmm. the PHP search results. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, as best as I can see, they actually aren't creating unique results, but they are allowing the search results to be indexed. Yeah. And why Google is indexing them is beyond me, but they are indexing them in droves. They rank number one, for example, for what weighs 2,000 pounds, and it's not a page. It's not a post. It's an indexed search result. Yeah, it's a, a query. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, so they're allowing... Yeah, so they've got this database, right? And then it pulls in unique results based on, okay, if you type in what weighs 2,000 pounds, right? It kind of cobbles together whatever, you know, database items they put in there, and then it's getting indexed. Actually, it clearly speaks to your database theory. That's exactly what's happening based on the URL string. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you look at, <laughs> yep, it's got, you know, weight, unit, yep. amount, all those things. So, right. Anyway. Interesting. I, I, I'm blown away by this site. This site is bizarre in all ways. Uh, and, and how they're getting that many backlinks, how they're even, I mean, we can't even get the site to, dog, to load on the doggone podcast. I mean, it's, it. it's highest um, search volume keyword, or its highest traffic keyword is 56 feet. Who Ranks for that? 55 feet, right? <laughs> um, close enough. And, yeah, 50 meters long. Anyways, it's just weird, sort of the, the things that it ranks for. In the amount of time I was able to spend on the site, I didn't see much in the way of monetization. Yeah, uh, I, I think I, don't, I saw some ads. Uh, there, there were display ads. Yeah, there, there were some display, display ads, ads but mm -hmm. I didn't see any other ways of monetization. So yeah, so interesting site, um, one that definitely broke our podcast, but I think we made it through. Um, so hopefully it was worth it. Hopefully people enjoyed uh, seeing was, this one. It, it to be clear, it broke the podcast more than once. Oh, We're yeah. It was that no one else can tell when it broke it the first time and we edit that nicely. Yeah, sorry, editor, but you got some work to do on this one. Uh, a few <laughs> few clips to combine. Uh, <laughs> but I think we did it. We made it through, Jared. Uh, we got through the news. We got through the side hustles. We got through the weird niche sites. Thank you so much uh, for sticking around you, Jared. But thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Really appreciate it. And if you want to keep following along, of course, you can join the newsletter at nichepursuits.com slash newsletter. Have a good weekend. Thank you, everybody. Today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. We got tiny links and placements on massive websites such as The Express, Mirror, Daily Record and many more with a campaign about the pros and cons of popular diets. Mm. How about? This is exactly how we've done it. Our client is a very popular fitness client. We have asked them to provide thorough expert commentary about the pros and cons of the most popular diets. Once we have this information, we put this in an nice email and send it out to 15,000 
Yes, 15,000 journalists from around the world that write about fitness. So good. And all healthy. Big publications picked up our story from the email, giving our client massive, juicy, saucy, healthy links that are 100% relevant to their website and that will keep the rankings of the website in a great shape. You see what I've done there? I hope this case study inspires and that you will start leveraging expert commentary type campaigns to land links to your or your client's website, just like we've done it with this campaign. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Just a final reminder that it was brought to you by Search Intelligence. And if you're looking for link building PR campaigns for your website, just head over to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Cheers.